Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This is part 9 of Linux for DevOps crash course and in this video I want to talk about how you can install, remove and manage different software packages on Red Hat operating system machines. Alright, so let's start. So RPM software packages and YUM. So let's just read through this slide. All software provided by Red Hat for Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system are RPM packages. That means whatever software package you installed on Red Hat machines, it will always have .RPM extension. Okay. Just like you have .exe uh, files that you uh, install on a Windows machine, similarly you have .RPM machines on Red Hat operating system Linux machines. All right. So the RPM command can be used to install, update, remove and query RPM packages. However, it does not resolve dependencies automatically. The meaning of this is you have the option to use RPM command to install any uh, RPM packages directly on your Linux machines. But uh, RPM command is not going to install any dependencies of that software package. Okay. So you have to ensure that you install the dependencies separately whenever you are using RPM command. So for this reason, we don't use RPM command in general to install any package unless we don't have any other option to do so. Okay, so uh, uh, that is why we use a package manager like yum or dnf. The yum or dnf command searches in numerous repositories for packages and their dependencies. So um, you can use yum or dnf. So they both are package managers and they both are installed by default on Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 9. Okay. But I generally uh, use yum a lot because I've been using Red Hat Enterprise Linux since um, version 7. Okay. okay. So uh, at that time yum was there. So I'm, I'm pretty used to using yum commands and since I can use yum on uh, on version 9 as well so i'm using yum but uh, dnf is more advanced and the new package manager which has replaced yum so if you want you can use dnf but in this in, in this example i'm going to use yum but the commands are going to be exactly the same you just have to replace yum keyword with dnf okay so and the yum or dnf command searches numerous repositories for packages and their dependencies so the main difference between rpm and yum is rpm will not install any dependencies automatically for the software package that you want to install and configure but in case of yum it's going to search for all the dependencies of that package and it's going to install that as well so uh, so uh, 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 this is the reason we try to use yum package manager or dnf package manager to install any new software Okay, to save some time and effort on the dependencies. Then the main yum configuration file is uh, slash etc slash yum.conf. Okay, if you want to ins if you want to change any configuration, you have to edit this file. This is the main file. Similarly for DNF, it will be slash etc slash dnf slash dnf.conf. Next is uh, I've covered the most used yum commands in your day-to-day uh, uh, -day work so the first command is yum repo list so let's go straight to the terminal and try and practice these commands so i'm logged into my uh, rail line machine from the last video so let's run the command yum space repo list okay so it's going to list all the repositories that are uh, configured on this server okay so just remember that to install any packages from a remote repository you already have the repositories configured on your red hat machine okay you have the option to add additional repositories but there are some default repositories which are given to you which has the locations or the urls of the different repositories to install any package on your machine okay so yum repo list is going to list out all the current repositories which are configured for a software installation okay and you can uh, ignore this uh, message this system is not registered with an entitlement server you can use subscription manager to register since we are using an AWS EC2 Red Hat machine we don't have to register ourselves with a subscription manager this subscription manager utility is used when you are using 
Red Hat machine uh, on another platform like VMware where you have bought the subscription directly from Red Hat. In that case, you have to uh, use subscription manager to uh, register your instance with Red Hat and then you can uh, download uh, different packages from their authentic repository. But in our case, since we're using AWS EC2 instance, we don't have to do it. Uh, we don't have to do this because AWS and Red Hat have their uh, tie up automatically. We just have to, uh, I mean, uh, we are already paying some extra money to uh, AWS to manage that with Red Hat. Okay, so we don't have to do anything with subscription manager on AWS EC2 instances. Okay, so this is just FYI. All right. Next is yum list installed, which is used to list all the installed packages. I'll click, I'll clear the screen and I'll use yum list installed. It's going to list all the installed packages on your machine right now. Okay, then uh, yum help is to is to get help on yum command. So let's try that command as well. Yum space help. It's going to give you all the commands or all the different flags that you can use with yum command. And then you can see it's a long list. All right, next is yum list HTTP. It displays installed and available packages. So if you want to search any package with a keyword you can use yum list command so yum list star http star which means anything uh, that contains http anywhere okay so it's going to list out all the all the uh, different packages available with http okay so you have installed packages i have already installed httpd on this machine so installed packages are these and available packages on remote repositories are these all right, then uh, yum search keyword uh, to list packages by keywords found in name and summary fields. So if you want to search for any specific uh, a package using a keyword, I mean, you're not sure of the exact package name, but you know the keyword uh, of that of that software package, you can use yum search keyword command. And as an, as an example, I'm using yum search all web server so let's try to use this command so let's clear the screen first yum space search space all space under double quotes i'll write web space server and you can see it's, it has uh, listed out all the different uh, components which have a web server in its either in its name or the summary fields okay Next is yum info a package name to get a detailed information about a package including the disk space required you can use yum info package name as an example I'm using yum info httpd httpd is called apache web server just remember this httpd is the name of the apache uh, uh, package name on a red hat machine okay so let's clear the screen and do yum info httpd. So you can see it has given all the information related to the, the package, okay, and the size as well. Next, yum install httpd. To install any new package on your Linux machine, you have to use yum install command, okay. So if I do yum install httpd, so I already have this installed on my machine. Okay, so that's why I got this message. The package is already installed. Okay, in case I remove it, you can use yum remove command, yum remove httpd, and I'm going to specify the flag as well so that I don't have to interact with the machine to, for, for confirmation. Okay, so hyphen Y is used if you want to just I mean, confirm that yes, I want to remove HTTPD in one go. It's removed. Now if I run that same command to install HTTPD, you will see I, I'll get the message. So yes or no. Okay, so it's, it's able to. So install any to install any new package, you have to use yum install uh, then package name. 
let's do yes and install it anyways the package is installed okay complete then yum update httpd is going to install a newer version of the software package and all its dependencies so in case i want to update any any existing package i can use yum update command so yum update httpd enter but since i am already using the latest version i have nothing to do so it's complete then yum update installs all relevant updates now if you want to update all the packages on your machine at once you can use this the simplest command yum space update it's going to see for all the updates that are available if you see and it's going to I mean, give you the information about all the different packages and their dependencies that it's going to uh, update I mean it's going to install and also the total download size as well and you can see it is 609 MBs because it's trying to install or it's trying to uh, update all the packages on your machine okay so if I do yes it's going to try and update all the packages on the Linux machine right now okay and it's it may take few extra minutes since you are trying to update all packages so yum update command and then there is another command called yum update kernel which is going to install the new kernel version okay so if you just want to spe uh, if you want to just if you just want to update the kernel version specifically you can use yum update kernel command okay so I think it has updated these packages so let's use an, an, another server to practice other commands since the first command is still in progress so we can do yum update kernel so it's going to show you which which kernel version is available and if you hit yes it's going to update the kernel for you so yum update kernel is going to install the new kernel version then yum list kernel is going to list all installed and available kernel versions okay So I'll just wait uh, for this command to complete. So uh, let's just read the slide in the meantime. So yum list kernel is to list all installed and available kernels. And there's, a, there's an important note. Since a new kernel can only be tested by booting to that kernel, we can install multiple versions at once. If the new kernel fails to boot, the old kernel is still available. The meaning of this is, when you update the kernel version, it is not going to delete the previous version. Okay, so it's going to keep two versions at least. And when you reboot, it's going to reboot with the newer version. And in case the reboot fails, so there are any issues with the new kernel version, you can always use the old version to boot your system. Okay, so this is the beauty of yum update kernel command. Okay, so let's just wait for, okay, uh, we have our prompt back. So if I do yum list kernel, I can see installed packages, okay. So we have two, two versions of kernel right now as I just mentioned, okay, after I updated uh, the the version of the kernel I have two uh, kernel versions on my machine right now next is okay so there are some additional commands with yum so let's try these as well so yum remove httpd we have already tried let's try it once again uh, I don't think I have yum I mean I have httpd on this machine so let's try to use this command anyway so yum remove httpd it's going to see if HTTPD is installed and it's going to try to remove it. Okay, so since I don't have HTTPD installed on this machine, I get the prompt, no uh, match for argument HTTPD. 
okay next is yum history history of yum commands executed okay so if you want to see all the different commands that you've run with yum you can use yum history okay so you can see the commands that i just ran update the kernel right i, I ran yum update kernel so it's it's there in the list let's try to run the yum history command on our first server now yum history and you can see all the different commands that i've run using yum if you want to revert any uh, transaction in yum you have the option okay so whatever you do is you have to use yum history undo and then the number that you see in yum history for example let me choose another command okay so for example uh, let's try to install a package first so yum install vim okay vim is already there let's try to remove yum remove vim hyphen y vim is remove, removed now i will install the vim again yum install vim hyphen y okay so i've installed vim now i will do yum history again and i can see the vim command which is given so what i'll try to do is install vim hyphen y so i'll try to undo it so i'll do uh, yum history undo 12 so you can see i get the message to remove the package okay because i want to undo the command okay so in command 12 you can see i installed vim so when i want to undo this that means i want to remove vim package okay so i got the prompt for removing if i do yes erasing deleting so yum has been removed okay so in this way i am able to undo a command using yum so so this is a, once again a very good feature if you want to revert your changes you can do use yum history undo command then uh, man yum once again you can see all the options with yum command it's a big big list okay yum is a great tool great great tool to manage your software packages on Android machines okay so you can use man yum to to uh, explore all the different options then rpm hyphen q httpd now if you want to check if any package is installed on your machine or not you can use rpm hyphen q which stands for query so rpm space hyphen q so here i'm using rpm command and not yum command remember this okay httpd so i can see i got this httpd and then the version which means httpd package is installed on my machine if i remove this yum remove httpd space hyphen y now if i run that same command again to query httpd package i will see package httpd is not installed so this is the uh, the way the best way uh, that you can uh, use to check if a package is installed on your machine or not okay then to list all files installed by httpd package so whatever files are installed i mean whatever files are uh, uh, installed by any package you can use rpm space hyphen q space hyphen l then the package name so let's try to install httpd again so I'll do yum install httpd hyphen y. Stbd hyphen y. So it's installed. And let's try to uh, see what all files are being in uh, have been installed by httpd packet. So I'll do rpm hyphen q space hyphen l httpd. So you can see all these files are associated with httpd package okay so uh, not a very important command but i just wanted to mention it anyways 
then as i mentioned you have the option to install any package using rpm as well okay so for that you can use rpm space hyphen ivh okay and then the name of the package so it's it's going to install dot rpm package without its dependencies okay so as i mentioned sometimes you will have a requirement that you have one url which is going to give you some dot rpm files that you have to install manually okay you don't have any other option i mean yum uh, uh, do not have that particular package listed in the repository you just have this dot rpm file uh, which you have to install on any any linux machine so in that case you have to use rpm space hyphen ivh then the name of the package command okay and then if uh, uh, that software uh, does not work in that case you have to install all the dependencies on your own okay this is very rare but sometimes we have to do it all right so that's all i wanted to cover as part of yum a uh, package manager for red hat linux i hope you liked the video if you did you can hit the like button you can share this video with others and you can subscribe to my channel all right guys i am going to end the video now and i am going to see you in the next one bye